Riley Reef has agreed to a restructure or pay cut kind of deal. It's certainly a pay cut. I want to see how much restructuring they do. But this is where he was coming from. His salary was $10.9 million, a prorated bonus of $2.2 million, a workout bonus of 100000 and his overall cap number was 13.2 before all of that. At least that was for his numbers in this year of 2020. So I did want to bring out some things, and those who are you know familiar with my channel when I talk about A1 Riley Reef, uh, I tend to defend him a little bit just because I feel like he is a little underappreciated by the fan base as a whole. And I'm going to read off some things. These are the top five highest paid left tackles currently. You have Laramie Tunsil. He had a pro football focus grade of 75.8. 18 penalties. That one did lead the league in penalties. And allowed three sacks. He has an average amount per year of $22 million. Anthony Costanzo, 81.3. Two penalties. Three sacks. Allowed $16.5 million. Taylor Lewan. 73.4 grade, 10 penalties, 2 sacks allowed, $16 million per season. Nate Solder, 64.9, 5 penalties, 11 sacks allowed on a $15.5 million average per year. DJ Humphreys just got signed to an extension by the Arizona Cardinals. 64.5 grade, 13 penalties, 2 sacks allowed, $14.75 million a season. Riley Reef, 71.2 grade, 8 penalties and 5 sacks allowed. And his, you know, his average per year was $11.75 million per year. That put him at 15th. And it's a very comparable performance rate here. And these are the 5 highest play, paid players at his own position and he's playing similar levels here so it's really not something i ever really saw it's like i'm not saying he's some all pro talent and i just think he has gone vastly underappreciated by the minnesota fan base as a whole and i just i always go back to like just remembering what this position was like right before he got to Minnesota. We were talking about Jake Long and Rashad Hill, TJ Clemmings. Do we bring Matt Khalil back? You have Jeremiah Searles in there. Andre Smith came in, if you remember. Like, it was a dumpster fire. And he came in, he brought stability, and he's actually brought in comparable performances to guys who actually, you know, get a ton of money and a lot more than him. And he's... In, he produces in within the same realm of reason, and Costanzo is the only one here who actually is like outperforming everybody. That's the only one. And other than that one, he compares pretty comparably. And in Solder and Humphrey's case, quite favorably. And the other thing this will do, this will also prevent a massive line shakeup. And just to give an idea. What it seemed like the left to right plan was on the line was O'Neal at left tackle. You have Dozier at left guard, centers Bradbury. Then you got um, Elf over here, Elf line at right guard. And then you're putting Rashad Hill over at right tackle. I'm not too proud of that because it's always risky. And when you're shifting players over, we already know what Rashad Hill is. He's a very serviceable, capable swing tackle if you need him for like a game or two, but if you're going in with him as a starter, you might as well already be trying Ezra Cleveland out at right tackle or left tackle and maybe even think about just doing that and maybe don't flip O'Neal, but just have Rashad Hill and Ezra go at it at left tackle or potentially Hill and Udo at right tackle and then the interior is already in shambles. Dozier it shouldn't be a starter. Elfline is a very bipolar player and his pass protection is almost non-existent but he's one of the actual, he's graded as one of the better run blockers in the league so he's a very bipolar player and as a run first team I guess they just want to keep Elfline out there because of how good he is at the run blocking 
but at the same time, Cousins will die. So that's a problem as well there. And I just don't think getting rid of Reef, a model of consistency since he came into Minnesota, would be a wise idea. And I'm surprised he took a pay cut. Um, All they're saying is it's a significant pay cut. We don't really have numbers on that. And I wouldn't be too surprised if they also knocked off the 2021 year because this is the second to last year of his contract, not his last year. So don't I wouldn't be too surprised if they knocked down his money a ton. I'm not sure how much, but knocking off 2021 entirely and saying you become an unrestricted free agent after 2020. That wouldn't really surprise me given how this situation is looking currently. And I do know there's going to be a lot of people who don't like Reef sticking around. And I think that has put a big you know, negative connotation on his name as a whole. And I never really understood why. Just because, once again, if you're comparing him to other tackles around the league, people are, well, teams are paying quality money for this kind of play. We got it at a very good price, especially as time went on. Once again, he was ranked 15th in terms of average per year, and now this deal just got even more favorable. And it's comparable, not always favorable, to all of these players, And but it is what it is. People pay for this quality of play, and we have it currently it's the interior that's the problem and a lot of people like to associate oh you have a line problem that means you need a new left tackle not necessarily but that's kind of how a lot of people seem to perceive it and yeah i would like to know your guys's comments down below and you know liking subscribing super nice and until next time i bet y'all do